No. And here's why I don't like getting my nails done at the salon. Again, starting short and then pushing that polish up. Can you not do that? Because as you can tell, ma, oh shit. Sit around there and saturate the bottle. Finished manicure. Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're doing a nail polish tutorial all about how I polish and shape my nails and some tips along the way. I am very particular about how my nails are done, how they're shaped, how the polish is applied. So particular, in fact, that I rarely get my nails done at an actual salon. I've been known to get a shellac if I'm going on vacation or if I'm gonna be out of town for a little while and I don't wanna to have to bring nail supplies with me. I will never, by the way, go to get a non-shellac manicure. Mm -mm, no, there's no point, I can do it better. And I've had my nails done at really cheap places. I've had my nails done at the Four Seasons and that was a really bad manicure, I remember. And here's why I don't like getting my nails done at the salon. No one has ever done my nails to my liking. I leave every time going, okay, the shape isn't how I wanted it, and then I reshape them. People always try to oval off my nails more than I prefer. I've even gone and got my nails done recently and said, I've already pre-filed them, please don't change the shape of them. And they still change the shape of them. I'm just too polite and I don't want to like, be like, can you not do that? Or can I just fix this real quick? I, I feel like it's rude, even though I'm paying for the service. And I just sit there in my head and the whole time I'm like, I'm gonna have to do that again. The other thing that drives me nuts is nail polish on cuticles. And sometimes they're not super particular about making sure that every little bit has gotten off around your cuticle. The other thing is when they file your nail and they don't get the file dust all the way out from like underneath your nail. There's just so many reasons that I don't like getting my nails done at the salon. I am a former nail biter but this was in like high school. So the one thing that I did when I went from being a nail biter to a non nail biter, what I did and I still do to this day is I put nail files everywhere I go. I have a nail file, of course, like in my bathroom where I do my nails as part of my nail kit, but I have a nail file next to my bedside table. I have a nail file downstairs in my kitchen in a drawer. I have a nail file in my handbag and I have a nail file in my car. <laughs> if I'm somewhere and something happens, I can just quickly fix it up and then it doesn't get worse than it would if I didn't have a file and I end up picking it. And so that is my biggest tip for maintaining your shape. The other thing that really helps all the time, really helps your nail beds and helps the look of your nails is your cuticles. And so I always use a cuticle oil and I'm not really particular to the type of cuticle oil, but I have this one currently from Essie. And you'll see when I do the tutorial that I end with this as my last steps. And I've been trying not to cut my cuticles. Um, I used to cut them like really a lot. And I think the more you cut your cuticles, the more they grow. I wouldn't say that I'm 100% not cutting them right now. I definitely, if I have like something that's really bothering me, I do cut it. But for the most part, I try to not cut them. So two really important things when you're going to actually put polish on your nails that I think people miss or they don't do is that a lot of people, and I see this at salons all the time, is they go like that. That will get bubbles into the polish and then it will create bubbles on your nails. Just roll it back and forth in between your hands instead of shaking it. You'll get everything mixed up without getting bubbles into it. And that's kind of why I have a pet peeve with nail polish bottles like this because it's really hard to do that. <laughs> the other really important tip, if you have a lot of nail polish buildup around the jar like this, and this one isn't even as bad as it could be. Every time you do your nails, you go like that to get the polish off. The process of that buildup around there is going to make your nail polish application more goopy as you go on throughout the manicure. So the way to avoid that is to take some nail polish remover on a cotton swab, let it sit around there and saturate the bottle for a minute, and then just sort of wipe it off and that will really help the overall look of your manicure, believe it or not. So before I actually get to the nail tutorial of how I shape and polish my nails, I just wanna go through a few product favorites. 
My favorite nail polish remover that I use all the time is from Up and Up and it's the strengthening formula. The reason that I use this one is because I feel like this particular formula doesn't like dry out my nails and the skin around it, but also it's really just for this packaging. You just put the cotton ball on top and you pump it instead of like doing this. I'll show you in the tutorial, but I always have these as cuticle nippers, which like I said, I don't try, I try not to cut them a lot. This is just from Revlon, I buy these. Um, one or two a year because um, these sort of like get unsharp as time goes on. So the other thing that I really love is this Revlon Crazy Shine and it's true it does give crazy shine. I don't do this every single time I do my nails but maybe once or twice a month I'll do this and it has one side that's a little bit more buff and so this will sort of buff the top of your nail and if you have ridges or any texture this will help smooth it out and then you flip it over and this side does give a crazy shine which then helps the polish adhere to and stay on your nail better so let's get on to the nail tutorial portion of it i'm sorry if the angle isn't perfect or if the lighting is not perfect this is all new for me. So my nails are clean and dry right now. I just went over them with nail polish remover. For filing my nails, my nails kind of try to grow in an ovalish shape and I just feel like that doesn't look good on my hands. And so I tried to do like a squoval. So it's sort of squared off at the top and then curves in a little bit at the sides. So I basically just kind of either go through the sides first, like this one is actually pretty good. It's maintained its shape pretty well. I don't have too much that I need to refile right now. This one right here is has gotten much more round than I want it to be. What I'm gonna do is just really hold my file square with my nail, and I'm just gonna try to really square this edge off because it's just a little too rounded to me right now. So I really like for the tip to be really pretty square so that when I set my nail file like directly against it, it's sort of squared with that. So it's really just following, you know, the flat edge of the file. And then I kind of round the edge just a teeny bit and my nails aren't in too bad a shape today. Just a few of them were a little crazy. I have this tool from Sephora, which I swear I've had for at least 15 years. I'll see if I can find something comparable. I don't even really push back my cuticles anymore, but I do, I do get cuticles that like stick onto my actual nail part. And so it's less about going this way than it is about like getting stuff off of my cuticles sort of this way and kind of almost going underneath the cuticle. I'll take these from Revlon and I'll just kind of go and see if I have like a stray cuticle. And that's really all I use this for. My cuticles aren't really that bad right now. Cause like I said, I've been not cutting them as much. There's a little bit right here that I'll kind of try to get. So I'm gonna go through with nail polish remover just to clean that up and make sure that there's no like nail dust hanging out under my nail. I figured that for this tutorial, having a darker polish would be helpful, and so I'm gonna use the Essie Gel Couture in the color um, 400 Caviar Bar. It's a really, really deep navy, and with this, you know, I use this top coat, and it doesn't call for a base coat, and it's been fine. So you'll see that this brush is huge compared to normal brushes, and I love it because it makes it very precise um, with how it goes around your cuticle and also the size of it. It's just, these are this is the nicest brush I've ever used on a nail polish. Um, and so my method is I usually try to get a good amount of polish on the brush, and I'm basically kind of almost setting the polish down and pushing the polish up towards my cuticle instead of placing the brush on my cuticle. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. When I go around the sides, I sort of put the brush on the sides, but in terms of like actually, you know, going up to the cuticle, I just kind of try to push the polish with the brush instead of try to push the brush close to the cuticle and then go from there. So I sort of like get it three quarters of the way up and then slowly push it up. I'll try to go a little bit slower and show you on the next one. But then I really like to try to make this pretty precise and so I always use an orange stick. I don't use orange sticks to push back my cuticles, but I use them to try to like make this sharper, make the edge sharp. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. 
So again, I'm not putting the brush and laying it down right next to the cuticle. I'm rather going a little bit short of the cuticle and then letting the nail polish sort of naturally push up itself. And that's how you get that really nice line around the cuticle. And most of the time, I don't even end up getting polish on my cuticles or on the sides. So let's try to show this again. Again, I'm starting just short and then I'm pushing the brush up and then going down one side and down the other side and then it's almost perfect and then I'll go in the middle just to kind of fill it in. Again, starting short and then pushing that polish up and because it's so much easier with this particular brand of polish and this brush, because it's so wide that this brush flares out to almost your whole entire cuticle. If you're using a normal Essie polish brush, it's not as easy. So I think that if you're not good at painting your nails and you haven't tried this polish, then definitely you'll become a rock star with this polish. And it's all about just being slow and steady. I'm not trying to be fast. It actually is a lot faster for me to kind of go slow with how I do this and not just goop it and slap it on because then I don't have a lot of cleanup. And so I, it's just faster to just sort of, it's faster to go slow. So there is one hand done. I think there's gonna be a lot of shadow here. Oh, maybe if I angle my nail this way, there won't be. See how nicely that brush fits right there? I mean, it basically like mimics the shape of my cuticle bed. It's perfect. Ah, that's not perfect. But I will go in afterwards with nail polish remover and do that with my orange stick, so I'm not worried about that. And it's because I'm doing this at such a wonky angle <laughs> that it doesn't feel right. Now here's an important tip for you. This doesn't often happen to me because as you can tell, ah, oh shit, <laughs> just as I say that, oh my God, this is, this is a perfect freaking example. So I was gonna say that if you flood your nail bed like this, which I kind of did here, here it just went on my skin and not on my nail and my skin. Here it's from my nail to my skin. So this is like, gonna be harder to clean up. Actually, this will be fine. I'll clean this up afterwards. But if I were to do that up here and I were, you know how sometimes you get, like you flood your cuticle bed with polish, it's quicker to just get a cotton ball, take the polish off and start over. Because if you try to clean up your whole cuticle bed with polish, especially if you're using a dark polish like this, it's just gonna look like crap, and I feel like you're just better off to start over again. So that's kind of what I do. But this is salvageable, and so I think it'll be okay. But honestly, if you get it all over your cuticle, you just gotta start over, or at least I do. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but <laughs> I'm showing you how I do it. And I've been known to do that. I just will start over. But slow and steady wins the race, I feel like, and always, provides the best manicure. Oh my God, I hope the lighting is good. I hope my nails are in the right spot. This is my first time doing a tutorial like this. So I hope that it doesn't turn out like crap. There we have it. Now, I know that I probably made that look really easy, but you have to understand I've been doing this for like 20 years. So um, I'm gonna go over it again with another light coat. This one is quicker, and obviously I have like the main base laid out, so it's not as about being precise as just getting another coat down. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of nail polish remover on an orange stick and try to clean up this edge. I also want to try to clean up. I also want to try to clean up this right here. Is like a little, a little bit went out of the line. So now I'm gonna go through with the top coat. 
but this is a pretty good top coat. I feel like it goes on really nicely and it dries pretty fast. It stays pretty shiny. I don't have too many complaints with it. So there is my finished manicure. I will let this dry for like a minute or two and then I will go in with um, cuticle oil. So there you have it. This overall dries pretty quickly. I feel like in 10 minutes I could go do whatever I need to do and it would be fine. So I really hope that that was helpful for you and that I gave you some good tips on how to give yourself a really good at-home manicure. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I think it helps somehow in the overall ranking of my videos. I don't really know. All right, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.